Welcome to Technology Paul. As you know, Apple is busy developing their software for a fall release. Each year in the fall, they release their new operating systems for iPhone, iPad, Mac, Apple Watch, and more. Apple's WWDC event was an absolute banger with so many things announced. A new 15 inch MacBook Air, Mac Studio, and Mac Pro with the M2 Ultra chips, the Vision Pro headset, Mac OS Sonoma, and iOS 17. Let's dive into just one of those huge announcements in this video. The iOS 17 update is right around the corner, likely due to be released to the public in September, but you can actually try it right now because Apple just released its first public beta. It's a chance for tech forward people to try the software before the general public. You can go to beta.apple.com right now and get started. Let's dive into some of the biggest and best features of iOS 17, shall we? Let's start with how Apple is making phone calls more fun. How are they doing that? With cool contact posters. You can create your own contact poster that shows up on your recipient's iPhone whenever you call. This is a great way to personalize things rather than just having the standard phone call screen. Not only does your contact poster get shown when you call a contact of yours, but in their contacts app, there's now a full contact poster view instead of the small contact images from before. This is a more visually appealing and personalized way to view contacts. And the fact that the end result is owned by you, the actual contact, is pretty cool. I made a simple one with my Memoji, but you can use any photos you have as well. You can customize the image, font, as well as text and background colors. You can always change it up later too. I think people are really going to have a lot of fun with these. Here's another way Apple is revolutionizing the phone call. There's another new feature called live voicemail. Basically, when someone calls you and you don't pick up, they leave a voicemail. Of course, the experience for them is nothing new. You, on the other hand, get a live transcription of the voicemail they are leaving. This way you know exactly why they're calling. When you have this kind of context, you might decide to call them back right away. But even better, you can actually pick up the call while they are leaving the voicemail. This used to be a thing in the 90s, I believe, when people had those answering machines. You could listen to the person leaving the voicemail, but you could also pick up the call while they were in the middle of it. Well, Apple is bringing this back in a big way with live voicemail. The best part is that the way Apple has implemented this feature, it doesn't appear that carriers will be able to charge extra for it, the way they have for visual voicemail. This is because it seems the iPhone is effectively answering the call in an automated way and recording the voicemail locally on the phone. This is a great move by Apple and allows us to get an extra feature without the extra charge. Apple's also adding something similar to voicemail to their FaceTime app. Now, when you call someone through FaceTime and they aren't available, you can record a video message for them to view later. The recipient will receive a notification that you left them a FaceTime message and they can watch it at their convenience. I don't really use FaceTime a ton, but I could see this being great for people who do. But that's not all that's new with FaceTime. Apple is bringing FaceTime to Apple TV so you can enjoy seeing your friends on the big screen. Of course, the Apple TV doesn't have a camera or microphone, so this is done through the help of your iPhone. With iOS 17 and an Apple TV running the latest tvOS, you will be able to start a FaceTime call on your phone and then seamlessly transfer it to your Apple TV. The FaceTime call will still be using your phone for the camera and the microphone, so you'll want to place your phone in an advantageous position to capture you and your voice. But now the people on the other end of the call will show up on your TV. How cool is that? Alternatively, there's now a FaceTime app on the Apple TV. So you can initiate the call from there as well. If you're wondering how you'll stand your phone up by your TV in such a way that the camera can see you, you can use a MagSafe charging stand, which positions the phone upright or in landscape mode, and then just turn the stand around so the rear camera of the iPhone is facing you. I've also found some folks posting 3D print designs for a simple dot that would do the trick. Speaking of charging stands, one feature I love is the new standby mode. This feature essentially turns your phone into a little smart display whenever you put it on the charger and turn it sideways. To do this, you'll need a charging stand. I picked up the Anchor PowerWave MagSafe charging stand from Amazon. I'll link to it in the description below if you're interested in checking it out. What standby does, essentially, is turn your phone into a small smart display. And it can do all the things a smart display does. It can show you the time, of course. There are a bunch of different clock styles available. But you can customize it to show your photos on a rotation, 
information, or you can play music and it will show you the album art. You can use widgets to see the weather, your calendar, your smart home controls, and so on. The idea is to give you glanceable information that is meant to be viewed at a distance. I personally think this is Apple's answer to smart displays like Google Hub. I think what they're trying to say is, why buy a smart display when all you have to do is turn your phone sideways and it becomes one. Or perhaps we're seeing early signals of what the interface may look like once Apple brings out their own smart display. Either way, I kind of want to get these charging stands everywhere now. My bedside table, kitchen counter, my desk in the office. I want my phone in standby mode whenever I put it down. Apple is also upgrading their widgets. You can now interact with your widgets directly from the widget panel. In the previous version of iOS, tapping on the widget would take you to the corresponding app. So widgets were more for at a glance informational purposes and to be somewhat of a bookmark on your home screen. Now with iOS 17, you can update information in the corresponding app without ever leaving your home screen. Only Apple's apps work with this so far, but developer support has been added, so soon third-party apps will be able to benefit from interactivity. For now, you can choose widgets like reminders, music, or podcasts. With reminders, you can tick off list items right from your home screen. With music and podcasts, you can begin playing media from the widget itself. This is a big step up indeed, since so often you just wanna do one small action. And these updated widgets will allow you to make that process really simple. And I can't wait for third party apps to support it as well. Apple appears to be working on another app killing software of its own, looking to outdo all of the journaling and diary apps out there. That's because they are developing their own journal app, allowing you to write and record the events and memories that you create. This feature isn't technically launching immediately with iOS 17, so I don't have access to it in the public beta to show you. It's listed as coming later this year on Apple's website, which likely means it will be an update or two after the initial iOS 17 release. Apple thinks that they are uniquely qualified to do this because we do so much these days with our iPhones. It's with us all the time. So it's not just a blank journaling app, but it actually provides you with writing prompts and the ability to include contextual content. For example, you can include photos from your photo library, workout and activity data, and location data, and you can even include music that you listen to during a special moment. Not only that, but Apple will be using on-device machine learning to give you personalized suggestions, including contextual photos and other media, and even writing a prompt to get you to record information about your experience. Apple says that your journal can be locked and is end-to-end -end encrypted through iCloud, and that not even Apple has the ability to read your journal entries. This feels like a great feature and an extension of Apple's focus on health. After all, writing and practicing gratitude have been shown to have positive mental health benefits. We'll have to see how good the journal is once it's released after the main iOS update in September. Stay tuned to my channel to get an update on that. Apple says the infamous autocorrect is getting a major overhaul in iOS 17. They said on stage at WWDC that they are using a new transformer language model, which uses machine learning for word prediction. What do you get here? Essentially more accurate autocorrect that bases its corrections on your common writing techniques rather than its own view of how you should write. Craig Federighi joked on stage that you can finally write that ducking word. Not only that, you get inline sentence predictions showing up as you're typing. So finishing a suggested sentence can be done just by tapping the spacebar. Apple is doling out the features in a big way this year. We just spoke about eight of the biggest ones, but there are lots more features as part of the iOS 17 update. Stuff like messaging enhancements, check-in to let your friends know when you've arrived somewhere safely, stickers that are created from your photos, name drop for swapping contact info, Safari profiles, collaborative music playlists, offline maps, and the ability to just say and drop the hey part. What do you think about the new features coming to iOS 17? What are you most excited about? Where do you think Apple missed the mark? Let me know in the comments below. If you're still watching, I'd appreciate you hitting that like button as it helps more people find this video. And if you're a tech fan, you're in the right place. Hit subscribe to get more videos from me on Apple, Android, home automation, and so much more. Thanks, and we'll see you in the next one.